At Blackfoot Communications, our mission is to connect people, businesses, and communities to their networks in Montana and beyond. Through Blackfoot sponsorships, local ambassadors, and public programs, we support initiatives such as the Emergency Broadband Benefit, Fiber Deployments, and Community Events. For information on our commitment to improving our communities with fast, reliable, and secure internet access, go to blackfootcommunications.com slash news. And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome in to the weekly Fan and Press Luncheon presented to you by O'Neill's Grill. And we do invite all of those and welcome all of those who are come here today, come here today to watch on JMU Sports Facebook Live, as well as that may be listening locally on the daily sports feed on ESPN 1360 AM and 106.2 FM, 106.9 FM, that is, uh, for today's uh, daily sports feed and the O'Neill's Grill Fan and Press Luncheon. I'm Kurt Dudley from JMU Athletics. Today, our docket looks like this. We'll have JMU head football coach Kurt Signetti with us as the Dukes adventure into the quarterfinals of the FCS playoffs. And then uh, we will also hear from, uh, from uh, Mike Carpenter as uh, Mike will be here to chat a little bit about tickets this weekend for the JMU football game. And we'll wrap things up today with Sean O'Regan the head women's basketball coach at JMU. The Dukes are at home uh, both Thursday and Sunday. Uh, and the men's basketball Dukes are at home tonight against Virginia, much anticipated contest against the Cavaliers. It is a 6.30 start time tonight. It is nationally telecast on CBS Sports. And uh, also, of course, you can hear that on the Morris Insurance and Financial uh, JMU Radio Network with Dave Rigert. That begins at 6 p.m. with his pregame coverage. Uh, so with his with the men playing today, we do not have Coach Byington with us as they are prepping for that game this evening. But let's now bring in the head coach of the Dukes, uh, Kurt Signetti, standing by here. And uh, Coach, first of all, uh, wrapping up things from this past Saturday, uh, a game in which the Dukes ran away from, from the Lions of Southeastern Louisiana. Uh, coach, they came in with the highest scoring, as the highest scoring team in the country. What did your defense do to control the Lions on Saturday afternoon? Well, I think it started up front. We dominated up front. We hit the quarterback 27 times. And uh, they made a few plays early in the game, uh, which didn't surprise me with the week off. You worry about that. Uh, but, you know, we had a, a part of the game there where we got maybe three or four turnovers in a row uh, and scored offensively on one play drives, really turned momentum of the game. So... We flew around on defense, took it to them physically, and uh, so it was a good start. Yeah, I, was, I was impressed with uh, a lot of JMU players, and of course, uh, DeMonte Tucker Dorsey had a great game. He, he had a lot of good numbers that show up there, and I was particularly impressed with uh, his, I guess it was his first interception where he uh, squared up and, and stepped in, in front of the receiver. That looked like to me, that was a lot of good film study uh, by, by Tucker Dorsey and other Dukes to anticipate because I mean, after all, Cole Kelly gets rid of the football pretty quickly, and he does so in a timing route. Yeah, uh, you know, we did a nice job of mixing up the coverages uh, and played a little bit more zone. And uh, probably sh he should have probably had one earlier in the game on a very similar play. But uh, he had a tremendous game with the two interceptions, one return for a touchdown, the strip fumble uh, on the blitz was a really good play by him also. So uh, we had a lot of guys play well, but uh, – you know, he played great. Well, is there one or two players that might stand out to you that uh, maybe didn't show up as far as the statistics are concerned? Because, you know, for example, Bryce Carter didn't have a lot of tackles, but did he or others have some bigger influence in the game that maybe the general fans didn't see? Well, yeah, yeah I thought we played real well up front. You know, Ukwu had a big game. I thought Mike Green played really well. Bryce Carter played extremely well also. And, uh, you know, Thurston had some plays. So, you know, when, when you shut down an offense like that, we didn't completely shut them down. They did score one at the end for 20. Uh, you got to have everybody playing well and uh, was really proud of the effort uh, that our whole team put out there on Saturday. One more for you here just to wrap up that game, and then we'll hand it over to members of the media today. Uh, it was very apparent that the Dukes felt like they could go over the top and, and beat. Um, you know, this was one of those days where Cole didn't have the necessary high percentage of completions, but you, you had a lot of explosive plays, a lot of big plays in that game, and it seemed very apparent that that was an area that the Dukes could exploit the Lions. Yeah, we averaged 24 yards of completion uh, Saturday, and uh, 
you know, we made, we made plays, we beat man coverage and he put the ball there and uh, we missed a few. We left few out there too now. And, uh, but it was a huge day. There were a number of one play drives in that game. So, and, and I thought our special teams, you know, there were some penalties there, but uh, I thought the effort on special teams was great too. All right. We do have members of the media in queue here to ask some questions and we're going to start off TJ Eck from TV3 at WHSV here in Harrisonburg. Good afternoon, TJ. Hey, Kurt. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, Coach Zignetti, a few questions for you. I'm going to start off with uh, throughout the last year or so, you've compared some other quarterbacks that you've gone against to certain guys. I remember Randall Cunningham and talking about Hollis Mathis at William & Mary. He obviously, he's dread Drew Bledsoe um, comparing Cole Kelly. What about your own quarterback, Cole Johnson? Who does he remind you of? Well, I mean, I've said a number of times that it, he's like a Tom Brady at this level because of, you know, his level headedness, his ability to process quickly on the field and, and he's smart and makes good decisions. Uh, and, you know, so you can throw a lot at him. He can grasp a lot of things he, and um, he's got nice touch. So uh, he continues to develop uh, really proud of Cole uh, who, you know, had a lot of skeptics early on, uh, Back when he was a starter, of course, Danucci did too, and he was player of the year in the conference. I guess we all have skeptics. But, uh, you know, he, to me, his numbers, if, if the season ended today, uh, you know, he's probably got the best quarterback numbers in the country. I mean, he's been a great player. Looking at Montana and taking a look at their stats here this morning, it doesn't seem like they necessarily have one standout player. It's a, a lot of guys contribute for them. What, what sticks out about what, what you see from Montana's offense? I think you got to look at Montana's team. Um, they remind me of some of like our 19 team a little bit. Uh, they have a, they have a great defense. They're number two in the country in scoring defense. I think they're first in the country in defensive touchdowns. Uh, their special teams are excellent. They're number one in the country in net punt. Um, they're highly ranked in all their teams. Their offense is extremely efficient. Uh, you know, they can run it and they can throw it. You know, the quarterback uh, throws the ball very well. Um, he can make plays with his legs. Uh, they've got good talent around their big. Um, and they're experienced, you know, they have seven redshirt juniors or seniors on offense and nine on defense. Um, so, you know, they've got nice design on their offense. Their, their defense is uh, extremely well coached. Uh, their whole team is. Um, it's definitely a different package than, than we've seen, than you see every day. Uh, you won't see the same coverage twice in a row. There's a lot of movement up front blitzing twists so this is a really good football team i mean they beat the washington huskies in the opener at washington so um been a good program for a long time coach Hawks won a lot of games at montana does a great job and then you know as you look at your team you're coming into i guess your first night game since the opener against moorhead state if you want to call that a night game because it was a much different time of the year uh, how does that change the way you kind of prepare? Are you excited for the night game? Like you're, you're going against a team that did just play a Friday night game last week. How does that kind of match up, you think? You know, the big thing is it's a day or, you know, we lose one day of preparation. Uh, so, you know, but we'll still have our normal Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practice. We'll just cut it down a little bit. Uh, but playing at night on ESPN will be good, be exciting. It'll, uh, be football weather, that's for sure. Whether we play at day or night in the parking lot or in the stadium. Doesn't matter, we just won't play. It's football season in Montana, and that means it's hunting season too. Keep your taste buds watering whether you're bow hunting or tailgating by staying stocked up on Alpine Touch. The traditional seasoning is perfect for any and all meat. The barbecue sauce, perfect for your tailgate. And the sunflower seeds, amazing, are ideal for hunting camp or your seat at the football stadium. Available at retail locations around the state or at alpinetouch.com. Alpine Touch, Montana's special spice. Okay, thank you, TJ. Let's uh, go on to Wayne Epps Jr., who is from the Richmond Times-Dispatch. Good afternoon, Mr. Epps. 
Hey, good afternoon, guys. Um, Coach, I want to start kind of a two-parter on the offensive play on Saturday. Um, first, what, what do you kind of attribute uh, so many explosive plays in, in that game to? Was it just simply, um, you know, the receiver's ability to sort of outrun uh, defenders in that game or over the top? And then secondly, what, 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 what um, kind of the biggest thing you, you need to feel like you need to carry over offensively from Saturday's uh, to, to this Friday's game? Well, we continued the trend of making explosive plays in the past game, and it was just guys winning their one-on-one -on -one matchups and Cole having time and delivering a ball, and then he made a couple plays with his legs too. So, we, you know, we a lot of guys play extremely well. I thought our line played well too. And uh, now there were too many procedure penalties in the second half when we got the big lead. We got to cut those out. We can't, we can't do that kind of stuff this week. We're not going to be able to overcome those kind of things. So, uh, but – you know, every week's a new week. And, you know, the preparation started on Monday for the players, Sunday for the staff. And you got to stack good days. And, you know, it's always just about executing and doing what you got to do to be successful. Those things never really change. Uh, Montana defensively, do you consider maybe the, the toughest part about them, just the, how many looks they can, they can throw up front um, when, when they pressure up front? Is that the most challenging thing about Montana defense, which has been, you know, so strong this year as well? Yeah, yeah, that's part of it, but they play hard. You know, the, their guys really fly around. They play with great tenacity and energy, uh, and they're always in the right place. So um, they got a lot of veteran guys that played a lot of football, and that always helps too. So you combine that, uh, the players with scheme and excellent coaching, and that's a good formula. And lastly, for me, um, how much do you feel like your own defense can help, um, you know, preparing – for that game, just the way you guys mix it up up front and pressure so much up front, um, uh, similar in that way to Montana. Do you feel like that, that kind of give you guys offensively a little bit of a leg up heading to this game? Well, I mean, our defense is, it, you know, is really, really good. And now at this point in the year, we don't do much good on good practice against each other because, you know, we got to save the hits and make sure we get, get them to the field on Saturday. But, you know, our, uh, our guys are, go against good players throughout the season. The CAA is a tough league. Obviously, in fall camp, when we go against our defense, we're going against good players. Uh, Montana's got a lot of really good players. i got a lot of respect for their defense, and uh, they'll be quite the challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Shane Metlin of the Daily News Record. Good afternoon, Shane. Afternoon. Um, you know, obviously, you know, Tanner Moore started on Saturday and I think played the entire game at center. Um, after getting a chance to you know, look at the tape, how, how do you think he did? Um, how did he grade out for you? And, you know, just, you know, being put in that situation. Yeah, I thought he played really well. You know, I was very encouraged. Um, you know, we had decided to make a change after the Towson game. Felt like we needed to. He stepped right in and uh, he played like a veteran. I was really proud of him. W were there things that he'd been doing over the course of the season that made you think that change was, you know, what needed to happen at that time? Yeah. Well, um, you know, he's a young guy and the center position was a little new to him uh, in fall camp. And if, if you haven't played center, it's not an easy position to step into. But uh, through repetition, he continued to improve. And just based on, uh, you know, coming out of the Towson game, we felt like, you know, he was ready for that opportunity and uh, played extremely well. Yeah, and you, you've talked a lot about uh, Montana's defense here so far. Um, what kind of challenges do they bring offensively? Obviously, it's not the same kind of, you know, passing attack that Southeastern had, but what, what kind of challenges do they bring on the offensive end? Well, their offensive line's huge. They can run, they're, they're good at running the football. They're good at passing the football. So they're very balanced. And schematically, um, you know, they got a nice scheme they can put you in conflict and you can't let the quarterback drop back and scramble around and make plays with his legs. So, but, you know, they play complimentary football. Uh, you know, the offense is productive, doesn't turn the ball over, scores points. Defense creates havoc, turnovers, scores some points themselves, and their special teams are excellent. And that's why they win so many games. All right, thank you. All right, any other questions from members of the media here for Coach Signetti? Actually, we do have one. TJ Eck has a follow-up. TJ? Yeah, Coach, when you look at Montana, 
do they remind you of any team that you played this year, whether it be in the CAA? Or like, who is the closest comparison you can use to a team that you've already seen? Uh, schematically different, um, you know, maybe Nova, but not, not the same uh, in terms of schematics. And then, you know, we always see kind of the, the keys to the game before every game. When you kind of look at it this week, this matchup, what are the few things that's really going to come down to that you're going to have to, to win this week to win the game? I think we got to get a big game from our defense this week. I think our special teams really needs to meet the challenge, which they've done all year long. We're getting some great effort from guys on special teams. And then offensively, um, you know, we got to, got to make plays. Our playmakers have to make plays. Got to protect the quarterback, scratch out a run game. We can't have uh, pre-snap penalties. They do a lot of stemming and bark some things out, it appears, before the snap. A lot of teams have jumped off sides. And we got to protect the ball. Can't turn it over. You know, we're number one in the country in turnover ratio, but they're like number five. So, to me, those are the keys of the game. All right, any other questions from members of the media? Oh, it appears not so. All right, Coach, thank you very much for joining us here this afternoon. Do appreciate it. Uh, best of luck as you get ready for Friday night's game, the Dukes and the Montana Grizzlies at Ridge Four Stadium. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. All right, Coach Kurt Signetti, again, the Dukes and Montana. Game time is 7 o'clock. It will be uh, streamed or actually on TV nationally on ESPN2. And, of course, coverage on the JMU, uh, the Morris Insurance and Financial JMU Radio Network with Dave Rickard and Clint Estes. And their coverage will begin at 6 o'clock on Friday evening.